everyone. Welcome. My name is Carol Himmelhoek of Himmelho's Department Store at Himmelho's.com. And I'm sneaking in here. <laughs> Hi, I'm Steve Ball, also Himmelho's Department Store at Himmelho's.com. Today we're going to talk about Chemex coffee makers. And really, they make a great cup of coffee, so we thought we'd share that with you. And uh, then we get to enjoy some of our coffee when we're done. <laughs> so uh, we're actually going to give a demonstration, but I thought maybe before we give a demonstration, we can explain how we got into yeah. being such coffee lovers. Why so, us? Why, yeah, why <laughs> us? Yeah. Right. So oh, yeah. go ahead. So, you first. I, well, I, I think our stories are kind of parallel, even though we didn't know each other. <laughs> um, I was seven years old when uh, I was in a neighbor's house, and everybody in the house drank coffee and said, here, have some. And I had some, and I was like, this is the best thing in the world, and I've been a coffee lover ever since. Well, I, I also, growing up, there was a, a, a belief that drinking uh, coffee when you're younger is not good for you. By the way, that you're hearing our, our water heating up in the background. Uh, but I still had coffee at home as a little kid, but it wasn't necessarily uh, the most gourmet coffee. It, it was, uh, <laughs> although I bet it was better than yours. My mom did buy like Kona coffee. Oh, yeah. she's so, very fancy. But, um, yeah. but really it was when I was in college in the, um, uh, in the seventies and a really close friend of mine, uh, was ahead of his time in many respects. Um, and he had an espresso machine <laughs> and we used to have espresso over at his house. Uh, this same friend of mine actually is the same person who started Zingerman's coffee. Uh, he has since moved to Texas, but he, uh, mentored us on coffee and introduced us to his mentor who actually is our coffee roaster yes and just a genius at the coffee roaster. yeah and i had a similar that yours was in the late 70s yeah at that point yeah mm -hmm. and i was living that was at u of m right. university of michigan and i was living at wayne state in the late 70s going to grad school and uh, renting a room in some old victorian house uh on Ferry Street and uh, Hi, Mike. You know, just living the life and Mike Smith. <laughs> hey, uh, living the life and uh, the People's Food Co-op was on Cass and uh, it was a classic old style food co-op. You'd go in there and there were bins of different kinds of beans and you know dried beans and whatever and, and they had several bins of different kinds of coffee and I thought that was just the best thing you could ask for. And I had, from my grandmother, I'd gotten one of these old 1930s streamlined metal hand coffee grinders and I would grind, you know, I'd buy different beans and grind them up and, and uh, just enjoy the coffee. <coughs> Excuse me. The difference then was I was using a, a really crappy aluminum <laughs> on the stove percolator small little percolator on a gas stove and uh, you know it was it was important not to heat too much so you were cooking it too mm -hmm. hard just enough to get it to percolate but not any more than that and you know and then there was a little bit of aluminum taste in there and just you know <laughs> it was good despite itself is what it amounts to <laughs> exactly oh. <clears throat> Well, how about before we demonstrate the Chemex, we say a little bit about how we uh, came, well, we have some coffees here. We have them, you probably can't see them very well. Here, so I'll hold I'll, it. Nope, I'll, I'll, oh, oh, okay. I'll leave it there. Um, this is, an, um, yeah, actually, I'll take a peek over here. Yeah, we can see it. These are, this is our 1907 blend. Uh, and we had the greatest time developing yes, this. We did. It is a very unique blend. Uh, if you love medium roast coffee, this is just, uh, it's unique. There isn't a blend like it. Uh, it really has, it has a blend of kind of a dark chocolate and a smoky and an herbal kind of note. And it has a, a sweet acidity that has a complex finish. It's really a remarkable blend. And if you're a medium, Roast lover, you'd like that. Here's another medium roast. Uh, this, let me see if I got this in the camera <laughs> here. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Gotta stand back there here. So, this is uh, Ethiopian Urgashev, 
Um, Hello, Kinzer. One of the hi. <laughs> well, hey, hey, hey. Nice to see you. <laughs> this is one of the first coffees that Europeans knew. Um, it came from Ethiopia, where where it was one of the earliest places coffee was cultivated. And fun fact: the the Ethiopian port of Mocha was the export. Uh, so the Europeans would see bags or, or boxes with the word mocha on it, and they thought that meant coffee. So that's kind of where that comes from. Yeah. This is another lovely medium roast uh, kind of coffee. It's a very interesting cup, but it's not overpowering in any sense. So And I should, I should mention, by the way, that uh, all of our coffees are organic, certified organic and fair trade coffees. Um, this coffee, again, I have to look and see if it's showing up. There we go. You got it, Steve. It is uh, La Belle Epoque Full City Roast. This is, um, it's not a full dark roast. It's kind of a step between a dark roast and a medium roast. Yeah. So, and a lot of people really love this. Uh, it, it, it has a very rich and smooth, mm -hmm. very smooth flavor. Rich and very smooth. Yeah. It's hard to get the combination. Uh, the, then this are our, our Detroit Fin de Siecle Italian Roast. Uh, this is a very, very rich and robust Italian uh, roast. One of the darker <laughs> yeah. roasts that you can come up with. Right, yeah. right. So. And it's hard to roast this dark without losing the smoothness, without it becoming a little bitter. And, but... And, he, that is interesting. Dark roasts, really well. a lot of dark roasts that you have, um, some people just, when you, we've learned in our coffee education that understanding coffee is almost like understanding fine wines. Yes. And um, a lot of people have grown accustomed to accepting and liking coffee that's burnt in mm -hmm. the roasting process. Mm -hmm. But to get a really fine, a uh, dark roast that's very smooth and isn't uh, burnt is really an art, it's and an art that's roast. something that our roaster yeah. is able to do, and it's just magnificent dark roast coffee. Exactly. So that's a great segue for one of my favorite topics, which is the third wave of coffee, um, which is what it's kind of called. Um, and Kinzer says that is so true, yes. isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. It yes. Is. Uh -huh. So, back in the 70s, those of you who are old enough to remember that, uh, like Carol and I... Um, Hi, Cal. Hey. <laughs> Welcome. So, we had, in the 70s, we were just starting to figure out the difference among wines and discover some wines were good for this and some were good for that. We, we kind of got over just, I'll take a red or I'll take a, a white, but there were different kinds of reds mm -hmm. and different kinds of whites in it mattered what type of grape they were made out of and it mattered where they were grown and how they were processed and it mattered what year they were grown in whether there was a lot of rain or drought so now it's very common to go into a restaurant any old restaurant and you don't just pick a bottle of wine but you get a choice of several different kinds of wines Oops. oh yeah. how would i do that i don't know do you want to turn the volume down good idea just turn it off Sorry, folks. I was, I, Kinzer, I was trying to reply to your comment. Okay. <laughs> she so, said Ben's a coffee snob. So are we. Good. <laughs> so here's where we're at today with coffee. We're kind of in the 1970s where people are starting to figure out coffees are different. It matters what kind of bean and where it's grown and how it's roasted and, and all of those things. So you have the big, the first wave of coffee really took off in the 40s and 50s after World War II, and that's when the percolator came in. Because before that, you had siphon coffee makers, which make a wonderful cup of coffee, and that's That'll a, be a video coming future up Future demonstration. <laughs> um, we may use Sarah Lewis for that one. Oh, that'd be great, that'd be yeah. Great. Anyway, so it's very messy and time-consuming and more like a chemistry experiment. And then the percolator came out, you just pour the grounds in the top, you, you put it on the stove or plug it in, and it cooks automatically, and it was good enough. And that popularized coffee with Maxwell House and Folgers being the top brands mm -hmm. that, that we had then. Then we move into the 80s, and we get Starbucks and some of the other national and regional chains that popularized interesting coffee, not just 
you know, if you get Folgers coffee, you don't know what it is. The, you know, the old ads about Colombian coffee or whatever, there's a lot of different kinds of coffee. There's, there's dozens and dozens of different regions. So you end up with um, the, the large chains in the 80s, they're starting to do different roasts and different types of coffees, and people are going, huh, that's very interesting. But it's still very limited. And one of the problems is what I like to call the factory roasting. In order to deal with the volumes that they have to deal with, they have to have big roasters running lots of beans through. And there's a problem with that because people in the marketplace know when coffee is under roasted and they don't like it. They don't know when coffee is over roasted and they'll still accept it. Mm -hmm. So all of these factory roasting operations are geared toward slightly over roasting because they don't want to come in light. They'll have problems with that. They won't have problems if it's too, too dark or too, too roasted and burnt. So. Um, what we have is really a coffee roaster who's artisanal, we okay. call him an artisanal roaster. He, he does small batches. Um, we Custom don't, blend of beans that we've selected. Yep, we've selected um, beans from around the world yes. to go into some of these. All fair trade organic. And he mm -hmm. does, does small batches when we need it. So we don't have a big warehouse full of coffee sitting there for two years waiting to get sold. We're pretty much buying in small batches as demand kind of comes up, so mm -hmm. it's it's really fresh when uh, when we send it out, and I'm proud of that. So there we go. This is our last one. Yes. Go and ahead. this is the one we're going to make today. Yes. Although we have an open bag, so yeah. yeah. This is this is our decaf, and from what people say, and in my oh, opinion, oh, it's my the gosh. smoothest, most wonderful decaf. That you, you would can ask never for. know it was decaf. Yeah. It is amazing. It really it's just is. fabulous, yeah. wonderful, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And since it's four o'clock in the afternoon, we're going to make some of this because we're going to drink it when we're done with it. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. So what's so the next? So how about step? why don't I demonstrate how to? How, well, let's first show you what let's a Chemex the, the is. All right. This. Let's see if I can even. Yeah. You hold it up. So that's a Chemex. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> it's Vanna. It has some <laughs> interesting features. It, they all come with this little dot. I don't know why. And they all have this wooden. Uh, top yeah, that's so you don't burn your hand. So you when don't you're burn your hand. It. And yeah. this leather and uh, other thing here. But I don't know if you can see it's well, but there's a channel. It's blown glass, and there's a channel that runs right up through yeah, here so it. that. Yeah, yeah, hold it. Oh, yeah, like this? Hold it like that. There okay. you go. You can see yeah. the channel here. The channel now. right in through right. here that comes all the way down into here. So when the filter's in, you can still pour coffee out with the filter still on. So. Right. And this is the filter. It looks a little bit like a. Actually, the filter uh, has Here. several parts. I yeah. hate to kind of take it apart. So it's yeah. basically it's a round filter, and they um, fold it like this. Yeah. And then you just take one. Yeah. Then you just take one end of it, and. Uh, and that goes toward the back, not where it pours. Filters. Where it yeah. pours. Don't goes, show them that. Yeah. Where it pours goes toward the, the spout in the in the right. filter. So it, it ends up like this, and we have a whole series of things we have to do. This is like a chemistry experiment. We have Maria, to... hello, welcome. It's great to see you, <laughs> Maria Lopez. Hi. <laughs> we have to heat up the water, and we have to wet the filter, and we have to hot the pot, and there's just all this stuff to go. So. So I'll show how to. The first step is we have to measure everything out. And actually, we, it's not the first step. Well, because we, okay, if we, I always start heating the water first, but if you want to do it that way, that's good. So you're heating the water. The first step is. <laughs> and let me show you, you don't have to use this type of heater. Um, let me see if that's good. This is a Cuisinart, and it's actually, we've been heating it to save time, but it's a hot pot. You plug it in. Uh, it's a convection type of heater, so it gets it up to speed, or up to heat, I should say, temperature. So I have it set for, you can select more precise uh, gradations of temperatures. I have it set for 200 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the recommended uh, temperature if you're making a uh, French press. Right, so just so. under boiling. Now there's different... Let me... Okay. 
So well, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do, then we're going to do All it. right. So first we need to measure out 25 grams of coffee for basically two large cups. We have a <laughs> fancy elect electronic scale that's accurate to a tenth of a gram, which is way more accurate than you need. And you're right, Kinzer, there's a lot of math. There's a lot of math, <laughs> but there's only two numbers to remember, 25 and 425. So 25 grams of coffee, and we'll measure that here. Then we prepare this, get the filter wet, ready, and warm up the pot. Then, while that's going on, we're grinding the coffee. Let's so say it's fresh something ground. about the... So it's fresh, fresh ground. And then we measure out the coffee into here, onto here, set this all back to zero, and measure 425 grams of water to flow through the filter. So that's in general what we're going to do. We'll talk about each of the steps as we're going to do them now. So where do you want to start? Well, how about if we start with, we have the water heated. So, and I, when Steve went over the, the quantities, you can adjust them to taste. So for example, if I'm making an Italian roast, I, uh, and I might make more coffee than that. I might make, say water. for example, I might make 525 grams. <clears throat> and mm -hmm. the typical uh, proportion for that would be 33 grams of coffee to 525 grams of water versus 25 grams of oh, coffee for 425, but sometimes I make it at 25 grams to 525 ratio, and um, I think it's plenty strong. So it depends on how so you the, prefer. Keep the point is you can adjust it. Right. But for now, we're going to just stick with 25 and 425. So what we also have is this scale here. So mm. what it, it's, it includes both a scale and a timer. Oh, maybe I should hold it up closer so you folks. This is typically what's used when you you're making it? Chemex. Yeah. So, so you'll see that uh, when you turn this on, you can set it to grams, uh, uh, and, and which ours is as the default, and then a timer. Um, and we'll explain why that becomes uh, important in a moment when we start. But what I'm going to do, like any kind of scale, <clears throat> Uh, I'm going to pour the coffee beans and it doesn't have to be this particular type of cup. I just happen to get it out. So um, what I'm doing is I'm going to place this on the scale and then turn it on. And when you do that, you don't have to set hit tear. It just goes automatically to zero. And I'm going to pour 25. So what that means is this scale will set itself to zero no matter what's on the weight when you turn it on. There's a tear button, T-A-R-E, which once we want to readjust it and reset everything to zero, that's what that tear button does. So I have 25 grams of coffee here. So I'm going to take that and turn it off. And we have... And that's you, what it looks like. We have this wonderful... We really um, treated ourselves and got this heavy-duty uh, grinder. <laughs> this is a Barazza... Uh, manufactured by Barazza, it's their Virtuoso model. Right. It's adjustable from very fine um, French, uh, no, uh, Hi, espresso. Kathy East is here. Hey, Kathy. <laughs> the, we can grind a very fine espresso or, or coarse uh, French press and anything kind of in between. Um, the, the espresso would be about a 10 on here. We set this to about a 15. So it ends up being kind of like fine grain sand, maybe a little finer than that. So I'm going to grind this, and it's going to make a lot of noise. So while it's grinding, we're not going to talk. shaking it was just to get any any loose pieces that hadn't dropped down into the grinder. It's a conical grinder. Mm. That I love really to well. smell coffee. Here, smell this. <laughs> <laughs> Molly. Hi. Hi Molly. All right, so the so, next step. So what we're going to do here is just set this back here for now. And maybe, Steve, you could track me so you can do more close-up now of what I'm going to do. I'm I doing make. that. <clears throat> um, so what, what, what I'm going to do is before I pour the coffee into the Chemex, I have the filter in, 
And the first thing we do is we pour some of our heated water in here. It, by doing that, we, um, we set the filter so it's going to stay in position. And we also heat the glass so that the uh, temperature of the coffee stays, uh, stays in good condition. So now that I've done that, I'm going to pour this water out into the sink. And notice because I, I wet the filter, it's not coming out as I pour it. There we go. So now I set this here, and I'm going to pour the coffee grounds, I have to smell it first, <laughs> into the, the filter. The next thing I do is I'm going to turn it on, and you can see that it, it goes to zero. It's tear. The other, now what I'm going to do is for 30 seconds, you need to pour a little bit, just to cover the coffee, just a little bit and let it go for 30 seconds. And by doing that, all the gases that are in the coffee beans are released before you pour more water in. And you can see the gases escaping right now, the bubbles forming and uh, releasing. And you can watch the timer, how it works on this. Uh, you can see that it's timing and see it's getting to 30 seconds. And at that point, I'm going to slowly add more we water. We also have 100 grams yep, total. We, and we keep watching the grams till we get up to 425. So I just kind of go in clockwise and just pour a little bit in at a time. You don't want to flood the coffee and you let it start to drain a little bit. And then you keep adding a little bit more until you get up to your desired number of grams of coffee water mixture. So as it starts to go down, I'll add a little more water. Right now we're up to 173.6 grams. And now I'm going to add some more. Just slowly, I kind of go around the edges so that I can get uh, any coffee grains that have been... Um, stuck on the edges to yeah, it's sort of they float up and then you have to sort of wash them back the down. grounds rather not grains <laughs> so now we're up to 238 grams and we're at the time is we're at a minute and 33 seconds I'm gonna add some more now because if you can see are you showing Steve how it's sort yeah. of starting yeah, to yeah, yeah. so now that that's telling me to just slowly add a little bit more now we're up to 314 grams, 315, 314.8. <laughs> Mike Smith says, yummy. <laughs> Kathy says, hi folks, I just happened to check in and you're here grinding coffee. Yes, we are. <laughs> Wish I could smell that. Come on over, you can smell it. <laughs> here, can't you smell it? Here, I'll put it right here so you can smell it. <sighs> I'm going to let that drain a little bit more before I add some more water. What are we at? We're at 314 grams. Okay. Yeah, I get up to 425. Add a little more now. It's just sort of a gradual process. Now we're up to 394. We're getting closer. So one more and we'll have our 425. Yep. And you can see that it's dripping down from the filter into the basin. It kind of looks like a science beaker, I think. <laughs> yes, I think it does. I feel like I'm performing a science experiment. <laughs> All right, I'm going to add just a little bit more. 422. There we are. We we have our correct proportion. So now, all we're yeah, it, roughly it's a, you know grams are so small that it really isn't all that much. So now we're waiting for it to finish um, dripping. And Steve, why don't you come back in and join me? Join the show. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm in the way. Yeah, you're in the way. So <laughs> He's to be one polite. thing that I like to do is at this point is just turn this off, take this, flip it over. Now this silicone pad becomes a kind of a trivet, and then I can just put this thing away. Because we're done with the 
with the weighing. With the weighing and the science experiment. And actually, so it's going to take, I'm guessing, probably about another minute to drain. Mm -hmm. About that. And so where else were we? Let me check and see what this... Okay. What else did we have to say about coffee? Do you want to talk about grinders and... Um... So this bad boy, or bad girl, depending on your point of view, um, <laughs> this is this is heavy duty. This is a, a heavy duty house. DC <laughs> motor in here. I don't know why I'm flogging this because we don't sell these on our website. But we don't. These these guys are worth uh, worth. How much did we spend on that? Oh, you can. These are close to two hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And this was not the most expensive grinder we could have found, but this one's a heavy duty, serious grinder. Uh, good value for the money, uh, several hundred dollars for some of the others. And I don't know if you can quite tell, but you dial in by twisting this in order to get the, um, the grind that you want. And, uh, and the yeah. lower the number, the um, more, uh, the finer the type of coffee you're making. Like when we're making espresso, we set it at about 10. When we're doing, it's still dripping. Mm -hmm. uh, when we're doing, actually, I think it's about just. We'll, we'll give it another minute. When we are making uh, the Chemex, we set it at 15, and if you were going to do drip, you'd set it even higher, and and then even higher for a French press. So at this point, um, at this point, it's done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the filter out. Oh yeah, I don't think you. Well, you're gonna track me for that. I don't think you need to. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna let this drain for a second in the sink. But we are ready to have some coffee. So. Kathy wants to know where we got that bad boy. I we'll find uh, I'll find out where it was and uh, hello post Anita. Something. I need a hi. I'll post something online about that. I know Anita drinks our coffee, yeah. and I know Molly drinks our coffee, and they're both here. Uh, are we uh, still in the frame here? We are. Oh yes, technologically we're doing well today. So I feel it's pretty funny as we do this. I feel like I'm on one of these morning shows and we're doing a cooking demonstration. So cheers! Now <laughs> bon appetit. We are sampling our own decaf. Mm, mm, mm. That's how you're supposed to do that. <laughs> That's how you're supposed to do it, but before I have to you, tell you, this is amazing. Before you even taste it, you're supposed to go, mmm, that's great. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? It, it really is, and and as I, Steve said, this is afternoon, so we are having decaf. Nom, 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 nom. But the quality of this decaf, you would never even guess it's decaf. It's just so robust and smooth. Uh, it really is. Yeah, so. It really mm. is. Oh, it's late enough. We could put some whiskey in here, couldn't we? Yes, we could. Yes, we could, but you we won't because this is good by itself. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's... I think that's, that's it. That's all we yeah. have yeah. for today. <laughs> so, thank you so much for Thanks, joining everybody. us. It's really yeah. been such a treat to see you. Those of you who are able to make it here with us online, that's uh, Cal and Mike and Kathy and Maria and yeah. Kinzer and Inita and... Uh, Let's see, Molly, yeah, just thank you so thank much you. for joining us. So and great. Um, let's all go out for coffee sometime soon. That's right, let's do that. Come on over. <laughs> or come on over and we'll serve yeah. you some of ours. I'm going to stop our recording. Right. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye-bye. <laughs>